afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Chooching on a Monday afternoon, November 16th. Chilly, 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 chilly. It's really, it's really funny. When I got to, uh, when I got to Chicago, the weather was, uh, nice and, uh, really nice weather when I first got there. When I left, it was, uh, horrendously cold. It had been windy and everything, and then I got home here, and the weather turned nice in Chicago, and then this cold, windy weather just followed my ass right in on the, uh, Chicago Express here. Uh, oh, I've been shaking this very light little, I don't even know if I call it a cold, just congestion or something like that. Some people commented on, they could tell my voice was a little scratchy from uh, talking and stuff. It, it is great to be back. It was, uh, it was a fairly good day at work today, getting back into the swing of things. And, uh, finally got around to checking some of my uh, Gmail and some of the comments and working on some of that for the uh, channel and it was amazing how many people had the same question to ask. How was, uh, what was Elvis really like in Chicago and uh, what was, uh, what was Tim McKenna like down there in the bars because these are, these are two very know fairly high profile individuals on uh, YouTube and of course Tim's been uh, kind of low-key lately and hadn't been doing a lot he was down in Talladega and it was nice to meet him but uh, you know other than that uh, you know we spent a lot of time together uh, Marshall and I down there in Chicago and I guess my my takeaway from Marshall is he is uh, you know not not tremendously, but there is some difference between the way Marshall is on uh, YouTube and the way he is in real life, because I found him in real life to be uh, much the gentleman about uh, holding doors open and, uh, you know, when we would order food or something like that, he would, he would go up to the counter and do the pickup and bring it to the table and made suggestions on places to eat, and places to go, and things to do, and, uh, you know, if it was something I didn't seem like I wanted to do, that was fine, you know, there was no, there was, uh, I really felt like I was treated like a, uh, like a, uh, a family member or a visitor, uh, you know, like a re very great friend when I came in, and I really appreciated that. The other thing is, he's, uh, he's quiet, when uh, you know when Marshall's outside, he tends to be very quiet and very focused on uh, what he's doing, and often that has to do with uh, food and uh, food experiences. And uh, some people were talking about, you know, it's kind of crazy how much uh, somebody focuses on uh, food and uh, uh, being a gourmand in life, which is really what somebody that focuses on. Uh, Food and not just package plain everyday food, but trying to get the real experiences of life. I mean, there's whole shows that have been built on the Food Network of people just going around sampling, uh, sampling dishes and just <clears throat> living to eat. And that's really the way they kind of marshal is that uh, food is a central core experience of his uh, his life. And, you know, it's it's something you th it's something you think you realize, and then you see it in, in real life, and it really hammers at home. And there's nothing wrong with that. Being a uh, foodie of the uh, first order, and I think it's kind of cool, actually, in today's world where everything's so processed and packaged, to have somebody that, uh, somebody that runs counter to that every day and uh, tries to eat the uh, tries to eat things that aren't processed and. Uh, had the restaurant experiences for ethnic cuisines, and I thought that that was—I uh, thought that's pretty pretty remarkable in today's uh, today's world. Uh, you know, people laugh about hygiene, and yeah, there was a shirt on, but stuff. He's he's a uh, seems to be a pretty meticulous person in in uh, person. There was oh, you know, the rig smelled. The rig didn't smell like anything when I went in the time I spent in there doing repair work and stuff. I didn't quite get to do the uh, the tour bit at Elisa Marie because time kind of ran out. But uh, it's a well-maintained 
rig and it's a point of pride and I can understand that. And the more I see more Class B people, the more I want to join. So my takeaway is uh, with him, you take off the uh, rough edges and that doesn't mean that you don't do the YouTube videos you want because some people were like, well, you should do you do your videos this way and, uh, you know, combine and editing, which is a good suggestion to make. But, uh, you know, just things like being repetition and all, re repetitious and all that. To me, if it's not hurting anybody and it's the way you want to put up your content on YouTube, I really think everybody else has either the choice to exercise that freedom to either subscribe or not subscribe and just watch accordingly. I think too often we try to, uh, you know, direct other people how they should run their channels and things, and we beat a little the uh, the uniqueness out of people. What makes their channels unique by trying to conform to some central standard of the way YouTube uh, should be. And I was watching a vlogger, vlogger frog, vlogger pupper today, and he was saying, you know, the risk is that Elvis could get boring. And yeah, you go mainstream a lot, and then it's, uh, you know, you're like a lot of other people, and you lose the uniqueness that makes it uh, uh, viewing you might not always agree with, and stuff you might want to laugh at sometimes, but it's 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 stuff that uh, people do watch on a uh, consistent basis, and you don't want to hammer that unique quality out of the uh, channel, so I hope that uh, doesn't change. Of course, editing can always be, mine, mine sure can be but you don't want to remove those things that uh, make it uh, unique so I found him to be a, uh, a person that uh, is certainly reasonable and very laid back when it comes to uh, other people uh, but yet willing to talk and converse I mean he's not a shy person by any stretch of the imagination but the food is the central core of his experience it's not drink it's food 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 and I kind of admire someone that has that single focusedness in life because uh, you know when you look at the way I just live to I just eat to live and uh, of course a Marshall uh, lives to eat and that's a, a cool thing just certain things I mean he doesn't do stereo vintage stereo repair projects uh, isn't particularly adept at repair work and stop it yet I'm no shakes when it comes to food and um, different cultural experiences and all that so I kind of I kind of like that so I'm glad on his hangout last night that he was, had the panel and the people on he wanted and could talk about the other great joy in his life which is class B rigs and when he's on class B's there's nobody finer on YouTube for uh, commanding attention and uh, walking new guests on like he did with James last night the uh, uh, anarchist on there looking at his uh, his coachman rig it was a lot of fun now Tim McKenna is kind of a bird of a different feather when we went down to uh, Mars uh, Illinois and Tim's kind of got a reputation of being a uh, a badass because he's uh, he's outspoken if something doesn't hit him the right way on YouTube then he's gonna be on it and I've been on the receiving end of some of his uh, his stuff and we've had some disagreements and stuff but you know there's a respect level for each other and I certainly respect him and he he respects me for being a, a person that's not going to be driven around or pushed around by other people on uh, you know bullied on uh, YouTube but I found Tim uh, really a guy that's super at home in his environment down there in Morris and you could just see the pride in that shop when Elvis asked him to manufacture or do a little fabrication that Elvis thought up for having his microwave mounted so it wouldn't slide around on the counter by having it put into a sink insert. You know, Tim just lit up at the prospect of doing that work and, and uh, knocking that out for, uh, for Marshall. And you could just see he was the kind of guy that just loves doing that kind of... Uh, on the fly engineering work has a very well organized shop with a lot of gear a lot of different projects going on it's the kind of guy that can turn around and figure a hundred ways to make a few bucks by uh, by clever by clever things uh, to do and uh, I really admire I told him it was the kind of opportunity I wish I had had to be able to pull up to a shop like that in our 
RV and spend two or three months doing projects, doing work like that, hanging out in the shop, bullshitting with Jesse and Josh and getting the work done, rebuilding engines, uh, all that stuff that I love to do so much. And, uh, you know, that they, they could really make that kind of work a great experience. And then, of course, Tim, as you'll see in the upcoming videos and stuff, which I'm just getting ready to put up uh, starting this evening, like, how many sections is this going to be? It's going to be a lot. <laughs> so unsub me now if you don't uh, if you don't want it. But uh, took us out for a really nice uh, lunch and just to be able to sit down with the uh, crew at A1 Automotive and towing was uh, was awesome. And uh, just to hear about their plans for the future and the guys talked about their girlfriends and they were joking around with Marshall about the BBWs and 60 Minutes and, <laughs> and all that. And it made for a really, uh, really wonderful day. And, uh, you know, Tim had to say with Marshall about this, the expectations that he would like to see him have. And, uh, again, it was the kind of thing where uh, Tim and I are on the same page. That we don't want to beat anything out of Marshall that... Uh, is the stuff, the uh, the uh, Ric Flair's, the, the pride in Chicago, the pride in the Lisa Marie. It's just uh, being decent to other people. That's the uh, that's the uh, real key. So Tim and I were definitely on the page with uh, that. It's my hope that uh, Tim might be able to come out and visit he and Laurie. Laurie's just a wonderful gal. And I'm really hoping that she's going to be able to make it to Las Vegas because she's very sweet. She has, uh, she's had a, uh, a jam-packed life and full of experiences herself and was uh, so wonderful when we pulled in there and just made us feel so uh, welcoming, as did the whole gang. I was surprised having what I, with what I heard about the town of Mars before, you would think it was just a, uh, Dump. It actually looked like a clean, attractive uh, town, and I think uh, Marshall and I were certainly impressed with uh, you know the people we saw there, and the spirit and the friendliness of people down in uh, down in that area. So that's the yeah, uh, that's that's two YouTubers, guys, that people wanted to know about. So there we go. Everybody have a uh, wonderful Monday afternoon. Check out the videos; they'll be rolling for the next week or so. And uh, Rosie in Chicago with the King and the Godfather of Illinois, Tim McKenna. Thanks for watching, everyone.